Hello, today we're going to be talking about um, some more geometry review. We're going to review the types of triangles and the different pieces of information that we already know about them um, before we move on to our next section, which has more to do with how we're going to use those triangles in this class. Um, so the first type of triangle is an equilateral triangle. The definition of an equilateral triangle is that all of the sides are the same length. Because all the sides are the same length, we know that all of the angles are also the same measure. Remember that in every triangle, the measure of the three angles adds up to 180 degrees. So because all three of them are the same and they must add up to 180 degrees, then we know that each of those angles has a measure of 60 degrees. Okay. The second type of triangle is an isosceles triangle. The definition of an isosceles triangle is that the two sides are the same length, right? The third side may or may not be the same length. Because those two sides are the same length, the angles that correspond with the two sides also have the same measure. Now, what do we mean by correspond between an angle and a side? Well, the corresponding side is across from the angle. So when we say the corresponding angle, we are talking about the angle that is across from that side, kind of diagonally across, okay? Um, in an acute triangle, we know that all three angles are less than 90 degrees. And in an obtuse triangle, um, one of those three angles is greater than 90 degrees. Now, of course, we can't have that two or three of the angles is obtuse, greater than 90 degrees, because that wouldn't add up to 180. Remember that the 90 degree angle is what we're calling a right angle, okay? And that is the one that forms a perfect corner. Um, building off of that, a right triangle is a triangle that has one angle which is exactly 90 degrees. Now, we actually talked about right triangles in the previous class, so I will remind you that the two sides that form the right angle are called legs, and the side that corresponds to the right angle, right, or is diagonally across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse, okay? Now, a particular type of right triangle is the isosceles right triangle, now this is simply a right triangle that is also isosceles, meaning that it does have a right angle and it also has two sides that are the same length. Now the sides that are the same length are those two sides that form the right angle. Remember, these are called the legs. That side that is across from the right angle or the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side because that angle has the largest measure. Okay, and our last type of triangle that we're going to talk about today is the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now this is just named by the angle measures, so each of the angles has one of these measures, right? The smallest one is 30 degrees, then the next one is 60 degrees, and it is a right triangle. It has a 90 degree angle. So we still know that this has two legs and a hypotenuse right, the shortest leg being across or corresponding to the 30 degree angle, the longer leg being corresponding to the 60 degree angle, and then the hypotenuse being a corresponding to the 90 degree angle, okay? Now, these last two types of triangles, the isosceles right triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle, are what we're gonna call special triangles. These have a lot of importance for trigonometry and we're gonna be using these a lot in this class. So we're gonna go into some more detail about them, how the lengths of the sides are related and what the angles look like, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some triangles here. So this one right here is meant to be the isosceles right triangle. I wanted to point out that when you are meant to know something's a right angle, you'll often see, um, that's not a very good one, you'll often see this little square in the corner to indicate that it's a right triangle, right? Um, 
So this is something that you'll see in this class, but you'll also see in the textbook when you look, right? And it does always indicate a 90 degree angle. Even if the angle doesn't look perfectly like it's 90 degrees, that shows you that it is meant to be, okay? Now, we also have some indications that we can use to show that things are the same length. Oftentimes, you'll see um, the sides marked like this to indicate that they have the same length, okay? So this one, again, is an isosceles right triangle. Okay. So we know that our two legs here are the same length, this one here and this one here, and then our hypotenuse is gonna be the longer of the three sides, okay? Now, in this example, if we look at what the Pythagorean theorem tells us, right, we know this side and this side are the same length. So instead of um, the Pythagorean theorem having three different lengths, right, we're gonna label the legs as having the same length. So we would have a squared plus a squared equals c squared. Remember, c is always the length of the hypotenuse. So this is gonna give us 2a squared equals c squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, Right, we're gonna see that we get root two times a equals the length of the hypotenuse c. Okay, so what tells what that tells us is that if we're labeling this side a and this side a, then the length of the hypotenuse is gonna be root two times that length. Okay. So this is how the lengths of the three sides in an isosceles right triangle are related, okay? Now, we also know that because these two sides are the same length, the angles that correspond to those sides, so this side would correspond to this angle here, and this side corresponds to this angle here. Now, because the sides have the same length, the angles also have the same measure. Now we know this angle is 90 degrees and these two have to be the same, right? So I have that my 90 degree angle plus two of my other angles, right? Those have to add up to 180 degrees. So this would tell me that each of those angles is, oops, is 45 degrees, okay? So this is gonna be a 45 degree angle and this is gonna be a 45 degree angle, okay? Now because of that, these triangles are often called 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, isosceles, right, can be kind of a mouthful, and so a lot of times people will simply refer to this triangle as the 45-45-90 triangle, right? And again, that refers to those angle measures. Okay, so we're definitely going to need this information about the measures of those angles, but even more importantly, how the three sides are related to one another will come up a lot for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our other triangle. This is the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so again, we're gonna mark this as a right angle so we know for sure that this is a right triangle. This angle looks smallest, so we're gonna label this one as the 30 degree angle. Okay, and you can see that that corresponds to the shorter of the two legs. Okay, that makes this angle 
the 60 degree angle, okay, and that will correspond to this side, which is the longer leg. Okay, and then of course the 90 degree angle corresponds to the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the three. Okay, um, so we do also know how these three sides are related to one another. If we label the shortest leg as x, okay, then the longer leg is root 3 times x, and the hypotenuse is 2 times x, or twice the leg, the length of the shorter leg. Okay. So let's actually do an example of using this information about that triangle to uh, figure out the lengths of some other sides. Okay, so we're gonna look at a right triangle here. Now again, this is why it's so important to be able to mark something as a right angle, and I'm gonna mark this angle here as a 30 degree angle. Okay, this side has length seven, and then this side is x, and this side is y. So we're asked to find the length x and the length y. Now, we know this is 90 degrees and this is 30 degrees, so this is definitely 60 degrees, right? Because remember, these all have to add to 180. So we are looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? So our shortest side is seven, okay? Our shorter leg here, right? This side corresponds to this side here. This is my shorter leg is seven. Okay, that means that x is going to be root 3 times my shorter leg. Right? So root 3 times the length of the shorter leg, which is 7. And then my hypotenuse is going to be 2 times the shorter leg, 2 times 7, or 14. So we can use this information about how the lengths of the sides are related to um, find out the length of the other two sides in a 30, 60, 90 triangle or in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with those special triangles for today. So um, let's go ahead and clear this away and then we're going to talk about similar triangles, okay? All right, so when we talk about similar triangles, what is a similar triangle, okay? Or what are similar triangles? So the definition of similar triangles, or of any polygons, I guess, Okay, remember polygons are just uh, regular shapes. So we say that two polygons are similar if and only if. All their angles are con all their angles are congruent.
Now, what do we mean by the corresponding angles are congruent, right? So congruent just means that the angles have the same measure. So we're saying if you line the shapes up, right, if you rotate them to be in the same position, all of the angles have the same measure and that um, the corresponding sides are proportional. Okay, so the idea of this is that the two shapes are exactly the same shape. Right, that's what the angles being congruent ensures. Right, so if all the angles are the same, then the two shapes will look exactly the same shape. But the sides being proportional instead of the sides being the same means that they may be different sizes. Right. But they should be scaled in the same way. So for example, it could be two times as large, meaning all the angles are the same, and then all the sides are twice as long, right? Or it could be 10 times the size, meaning that all the angles are the same and the corresponding sides are 10 times as long. So that's what we mean by different sizes. They have to be different sizes in a proportional way. Okay, so let's talk about a, th um, a theorem that says when two shapes are actually similar or specifically triangles in this one. So if all three triangles, oh I'm sorry, if all three angles in a triangle Okay, so if all three angles in one triangle are the same as the angles in another triangle, then the triangles are similar. So this is telling you that if you know all three angles are the same, then you can infer that all the sides are proportional to one another. Now we're going to use this a lot to figure out missing side lengths. Now something that's helpful in this situation is a corollary. So a corollary is something that you can um, quickly conclude from a more important statement like this theorem. So this is going to say that if two angles are the same,
Okay. So this is saying that if two of the angles are the same as two angles in the other triangle, then that's enough to conclude that the two triangles are similar. Now, why that might be is because we know that all three angles in a triangle have to add to 180. So if you know two triangles are the same, you can find the third angle by subtracting from 180. If you do that in both triangles, that third angle has to be the same because they always had to have to add up to 180. Okay. Now, one more way to tell if um, two triangles are similar, similar, sorry, another corollary, right? Okay, so we're talking about two different triangles, triangle ABC and this other triangle that's labeled as A prime, B prime, C prime. Now we use this notation to show which two sides are corresponding, right? So A would correspond to A prime, B would correspond to B prime, and C would correspond to C prime. Okay, so this is just a way of labeling two different triangles. So If we have these two conditions where the side length AB divided by the side length A prime B prime is the same as another side length proportions, okay, so this is saying that these side lengths are proportional to one another, okay? And we have the angle measure that the measure of angle A and the measure of angle A prime, right, are equal to one another, then the tr two triangles are similar. Okay, now what's important about this is that the two sides we know are proportional are the two sides that um, form that angle A, right? So when we're looking at this side AB and AC, right, those are the two sides that form the angle A. So we're looking at what in geometry is normally described as side angle side. Right, so the angle is included by those two sides, AB and AC. Okay, so this is another set of conditions where you can tell for sure that two triangles are similar to one another. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and do an example with similar triangles. We're going to um, do an example that's maybe a little bit more basic and should be a review type example and in class we'll go over something that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's look at this example with similar triangles. Okay, so we're going to try to find any sides and angles that are not already listed. Okay, so here's one triangle. We're going to mark this as a 90 degree angle. Okay, and then I know that this angle here is 37 degrees. Okay. 
Now, one thing that's important to note about this right away is that this is not one of our special triangles, right? It's not 30, 60, 90, and it's not 45, 45, 90. So we can't just immediately use those side lengths in order to tell um, which sides have which corresponding features, okay? So this is a 90 degree angle. This is a 37 degree angle. Okay. And then, oh, I forgot to label these. So this is going to be A. The right angle is going to be C. And this 37 degree angle is going to be B. Okay. This is going to be D, E, and F. Okay, so my E is 37 degrees, we don't know D, and then this side length is 6. Okay, so this is what we know from the problem. So we're supposed to find any angles and side lengths that are not already listed here. Now, the easiest thing to do is to find this unmarked angle here, right? So we know that our angle C, which is 90 degrees, plus our angle B, which is 37 degrees, plus our angle A, right? These are all going to add up to 180. Okay, so this is going to tell me that my angle A is actually 53 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be this angle here. So I'm just going to write 53 degrees. Okay, now if you notice, this triangle has the exact same two labeled angles, 90 degrees and 37 degrees, which means that this one must also be 53 degrees. Okay, so we can tell that all three of the angles are the same. We could even have said before we found the 53 degree angles um, because of our corollary, but we know that these triangles are similar. Okay. So what that tells us is that the sides are proportional. So if we set up a proportion comparing two sides in this smaller triangle, like 3 over 4, that should be the same as comparing two of the sides in the larger triangle. Now we have to be careful that we're comparing the two same sides, okay? Now here, the 3 was between the 53 degree angle and the 90 degree angle. So we're looking at the, between the 53 degree angle and the 90 degree angle. So the corresponding side to this one is the 6. Okay. And then the 4 goes between the 90 degree angle and the 37 degree angle. So that's going to be this side here which is the side D, right? It corresponds to the angle D, okay? And now we can use cross multiplication to find this angle. So I have 3D equals 24, right? Six times four. So that gives me that the, the side length D is eight, okay? So this side here is gonna be eight, okay? And then we can use the same tactic to find this hypotenuse, right? So we're going to compare either of these two side lengths with the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter. So I'll compare the longer leg 4 with the hypotenuse 5, okay? Then I'm going to compare the longer leg 8 with the hypotenuse F, right? This is my side F, right? Corresponds to angle F. So I'm again going to use cross multiplication. So I get 4f equals 8 times 5 or 40. And this gives me that the hypotenuse length is 10. Okay. 
So you can see that the side lengths are proportional, right? They are twice as long as the smaller triangle. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover in this lecture video. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you write them down and you ask them during class time, and I will see you guys soon.